thought I would talk a little bit about the notions side of using the Brother PE770 machine for embroidery. Lots of different embroidery threads out there. I so far have really not seen any that I found were breaking more than others um, in the machine. I think the breakage, if it happens at all during a design, is based more on probably the design itself. And that means that if you have areas that are really, really heavily sewn, you're more likely to break thread if there's um, some tension issues going on or something. I have had it happen a couple of times. I really couldn't figure out why it happened. It didn't, I tried different threads and uh, some were breaking and some were not. So I wrote down the names of the ones that had broken, but it only happened a couple of times. So I really wasn't too concerned because I knew it was sewing a very um, sort of thread heavy area. And when I've sewn more simple designs or ones that have been downloaded, um, I didn't find that there was any problem with any thread breakage. I did buy the Metro Thread set that has their largest set that has lots and lots of different colors. I think the thread seems okay so far. The spools are very, very cheap and um, very rough on the edges and stuff. Um, the Sigma that they also sell seems like it's a little bit better and I really like the fact that the already come with a hole punched in the middle for um, where the um, the label is on the top. The labels can be a big pain um, and leave a lot of sticky stuff behind on your horizontal thread spool um, thingy that goes through there and I love it when some of the brands already have a hole poked in them like Sulky the larger rolls like this of Sulky nice hole already in it. You don't have to worry about ever losing your number, your color number, like that's number 1120. And it's exceedingly important, no matter what, that if you lose the stickers on the top ends of your roll of thread that you, well, first of all, that you don't lose them. But if you think that you're going to lose them or you have to cut them off or cut them partially off and they might come off later, make sure that you just take a marker and write on the edge of your spool what the color number is because once you separate that um, those two things um, you're going to be lost without knowing what color it is that you have um, unless you're just using a couple of basic colors when you have a lot of thread you really need to make sure that you record what the color number is on here if you think there's a possibility that this tag might come off now some of the manufacturers are very smart and they just print it right on they just put the color information and everything right on the spool itself. So, Guterman and Sulky, these these smaller reels of it, there's color 1057 is right written right on there. So, even if this comes off, because this does have to, you have to cut a hole in this. I wouldn't recommend just punching through on the top, uh, sort of like we did in the old days. Um, these days it doesn't seem to work well. Usually the whole label will come off, or at the very least you will get a lot of sticky stuff left on your horizontal post um, and that won't cause trouble when reels of thread try to turn it'll start um, holding it back so I had to even use some sticky remover to get all that stuff off of mine so uh, I find that the just like the regular coats that you buy at the local stores that is bad and um, I, again I don't punch it through I just take my little I have a little pointed embroidery scissors here that I just take and I just cut cut it out, you know, four cuts, pull it up by hand, and then do what I can to salvage the label at least. Now, regular thread that's just on a spool, like as we all think of it, like this, and like this, and even like this, those are fine to put up in the, um, the normal position on the sewing machine. However, the cones here are really not meant to go up there. The cones are meant to stand up. So the cones obviously hold more threads. So if you're doing a lot of embroidery or you get a good deal, like the Sigma and the Metro threads are very inexpensive. Um, those, uh, a thousand meters, this one is. And so they're gonna last a long time, but they also are going to not be able to be used like this. Now, actually the Sigma, for some reason, I was able to use up here. The Metro, however, do not ever try to do that because it won't work. These plastic edges here are so rough that the thread just gets caught up and it stops and it's kind of a disaster. So what I've decided um, to do is to go with 
a method that I read about online. Very simple. You can get a thread stand if you want, or if you already have one, you can use a thread stand so it just sits flat horizontally or vertically. Um, but what I do is I just took um, I just took a little cup here. Someone mentioned this online. It was a simple way to do it and much cheaper than buying a, a stand. Just drop it in, <clears throat> and it really feeds it very nicely off of this. You really don't need anything more than that. The only other trick is to get a good path so that as the thread, excuse me, so as the thread um, comes up and over, uh, you're not going to get caught up on anything. So the path that I found on this, I just keep the cup on the right hand side, kind of to the right of this vent here. I just go up and over right behind these two bobbin winding <clears throat> posts. So I just put it behind there basically, behind the metal of this and just underneath here. And then I just bring it over and I just thread the machine the normal way I would. So really it's still in a very similar horizontal path as if it were laying here. It doesn't seem to get caught up on anything here. Feeds very nicely and uh, feeds right off the top and um, I solved the problem completely. So um, if you have any of the stand-up type um, spools, the best thing to do if you want to keep it simple, just put it in a cup over there and thread it the normal way. If you get a lot of thread, you're going to need a place to keep it. And I found that the um, over at Amazon they do sell a lot of people complain about the quality and it's true the quality is not great because it's it's basically a little wooden stand with um, little pegs sticking out of it and um, you can't really use it with the stand because it is very rickety and it would just fall over so anyway I just unscrewed the the legs of the stand and then I mounted them on the wall I have three of them here across and you know you can organize it however you want I have it organized um, just for my own sort of the way I look at things in similar shades together and some of the the Sigma rolls have to be put on kind of upside down because they really don't stay on the other direction so those are probably the worst for hanging on these racks um, the Metro are the next worst because they've got that wide base so really anything um, that you're gonna get that's sort of a cone style is going to be a little iffy. They, they do fit on there, but they kind of have bases that overlap. So when you go to take them off, you have to kind of hold one on either side of them to get it off if you're going to use these racks. You can certainly make something out of pegboard and make it um, so that your things will fit a little bit prettier. But I am um, not a fond of what pegboard looks like. It just always looks like an ugly old basement. So I thought I would try this instead. Um, so, and of course, regular rolls, you know, just the small rolls like that, those fit just fine, and a regular roll of thread will fit just fine as well. Um, so this is the way I decided to organize my thread, and uh, seems to be working out pretty well. Again, I just removed the legs off of these. There's, you know, vertical legs that go on to as a stand, and that really would not last very long standing up. Um, but I just put nails into the wall, and I just hooked them over the top, and it was very easy. One more thing about thread. Um, when I started getting a lot of thread, I knew I was going to have to have some way to organize it, especially if I was going to be using online um, color conversion charts and stuff where you have to convert one color from a certain uh, manufacturer to another. And, you know, normally that uses numbers. So I knew there was no way I could be doing it without using the computer. So I set up a little spreadsheet and I sort it by um, the brand of thread. And then, secondly, I sort it by the color number. So basically I can search for anything that I need in this or I can resort it so that it's sort of just by color number and it really helps me to keep track. So like column A I have the brand, column B I have the color number, column C I have the color name um, and any notes like if, if the color name doesn't really describe what the color actually looks like I would put it parentheses and just say what I thought that it looked like. Um, the, the next column polyester or rayon I have that in there quantity that I have, the vendor where I bought it from, and then I put a link directly to that company's website if it's online. And I have another column that just says metallic or you know special type of thread, yes or no. And pretty much that's it. So um, I have uh, quite a bit of the Madeira because I bought a set that had a lot of different colors from Madeira and I have a lot from Metro because I also bought a set from there. So I'm able to go in and really easily keep track and find what I have 
I also um, decided that I would put it, I would convert it to a PDF, and then I would email it to myself and put it in my iPhone. And so basically, after I email it to myself, I download it and I put it in um, either Kindle or the iBooks. So the PDFs will, you know, it'll take a PDF and save it in there. So basically, you can, I, when I, if I'm out somewhere shopping and I see a thread that I want, but I don't know if I have that color, um, I can just open up my phone, open up that PDF, and then search through this whole list. And I just try to keep it up to date if I make any changes and add any new threads to it. So it's one more thing you might think about trying to keep track of your thread is um, using an Excel spreadsheet, a very simple one, just uh, to be able to list everything that you have. Okay, I hope that might be of help for you. Take care.